faced with a series of great opportunities brilliantly disguised as impossible situations. So wrote Charles R. Swindoll, according to the internet. This enervating sentiment is typical of modern business rhetoric. Nothing is bad, a tragedy, a pain in the arse or a pisser. These things are just opportunities or, at the very worst, challenges. Well, not everything that isn't the way we want it to be is a challenge. Sometimes it's a problem. For instance, there's a lot of talk about the challenge old media like newspapers and TV face from the internet. But it's not a challenge, it's the thing that's killing them. It's not an exciting, inspiring challenge to bring some interest into the otherwise jaded lives of newspaper editors. It isn't a thrilling opportunity to think outside the box. It's a huge threat that's killing them off and which they wish with all their hearts they didn't have to face. It's not a crossword puzzle, it's a leopard. Climbing a mountain because you want to see if you can climb a mountain is a challenge. Climbing a mountain because while you were at work someone put a mountain between you and your house is a problem. And in old media's case, the internet has not only built that mountain, but also placed on top of it old media's mountaineering equipment, heart medicine and wheelchair. I suppose the point is to encourage positive thinking as a motivational tool. That people are more likely to be energetic and creative about facing a challenge or embracing an opportunity than solving a problem or countering a threat. But is that really the case? Are we so pessimistic we think that as a species we're doomed to founder unless we resort to cheap rhetorical cheerleading? Are we really more likely to focus on a problem if our leaders make it sound like a fun activity rather than a life-endangering menace? I'd like to think we're better than that. I'd like to, but I don't. In my heart, I suspect the challenge mongers are quite right that the reframing works. It stops people getting too depressed and listless about things that are basically just awful. Up to a point, anyway. But I imagine even they have a job at one another's funerals. We're here to celebrate the life of Darren Smiley, tireless challenge taker and opportunity grabber. And what an exciting time for him this is, as he is presented with his most exciting challenge to date. To force open his lifeless eyes, reboot his defunct system, kick apart the coffin and join us at the wake in time for nibbles. If I know Darren at all, I'm sure he's finding the challenge incredibly exciting and he'll be relishing the chance to demonstrate that rising from the dead is an opportunity that can only be seized by people lucky enough to have died. Rest in peace, Darren. See you in 20.